Hey! So, this is going to be a quick video talking about a new series that I've become obsessed with. The Legend of Heroes series. Or, more specifically, the Trails game in the Legend of Heroes series. This is a set of RPGs developed by Falcom, and one of its biggest draws is its phenomenal world building. Trails is known for having a lot of full-sized RPGs that take place within a relatively short time span, no matter where in the world of Zemuria the story takes place. I want to talk a little bit about this series, what's inside, and why you should check it out. So, right now, counting main series RPG titles, we have 12 Trails games that are released. And now you might be saying, wait, 12 games that are full-sized RPGs? That is a lot. And yes, yes it is. I'm obviously not here to say that you need to spend the next three months of your lives solely playing Trails games to get caught up. But I'm also not saying that. Trails is a global story. and takes place within a seven year time span, at least for the currently released titles across a continent called Zemuria, with plenty of countries inside. In the series are distinct arcs that focus on specific countries and their relationships to those surrounding them. And I want to go over those quickly. First up is the Liberal arc. Named such because it focuses on the Kingdom of Liberal in Zemuria South, and focuses on dual main protagonists Estelle and Joshua Bright, among other important characters. This arc is a trilogy, and contains Trails in the Sky first chapter, or colloquially known as FC, Trails in the Sky second chapter, or SC, and then finishing up with Trails in the Sky the third. These games take place in the years 1202 and 1203. Currently, this trilogy is all available on Steam and is fully playable in English officially. Now, the next two arcs that happen side by side and take place at the same time starting in 1204, but from different points of view. Chronologically, we're going to talk about the Crossbell arc, which takes place in the small city state of Crossbell. Now, this is a bit of a complicated one as currently only half of this duology has been officially released in the West. We'll get to that in a second. First is Trails from Zero, and just released in September for Steam, Switch, and PS4. Although you should probably play the Steam or the Nintendo Switch versions, as they are noticeably better than the PS4 version. If you want more information on that, I've linked a video in the description that talks about more of that in depth. This game focuses on a group of four police officers who work for the Special Support Section, being Lloyd Bannings, Randy Orlando, Ellie McDowell, and Tio Plata, among others. The sequel, Trails into Azure, is going to be releasing officially in the West for the first time on March 14, 2023 in the West, and March 17, 2023 for Europe. But a fan translation from the Geofront, a group of extremely talented translators and programmers exists and is the version the upcoming official release is based on, as the current localizers, NIS America, purchased both of the Crossbells fan translations. I'll talk a little bit more on this topic in a bit. So if you're so inclined, you are able to purchase a PC version of Azure, and apply the Geofront patch to it to play it in English today. But it is only available on PC currently, as the original PSP release, as far as I'm aware, has not been English patched. Next up is the third set of games, and is the largest yet, the Erebonian Arc, covering what is currently the largest landmass in Zemuria, the Erebonian Empire. This contains the Trails of Cold Steel Tetralogy. These games begin in 1204, like the Crossbell Arc, but unlike them, they do not end in that year, as the Crossbell games continue on all the way into the year 1206. These games are all officially available in English, depending on the platform. So, the entire Tetralogy is available everywhere on Steam and PlayStation 4, but on Nintendo Switch, only Cold Steel 3 and Cold Steel 4 are available in English territories, as the first two Cold Steel games, for whatever reason, were only released in Japan. This set of games follows the largest main cast yet, with the members of Class 7 of the Erebonian Military School, Tours. Characters include Reen Schwarzer, Elisa Reinfurt, Elliot Craig, Laura S. Arsaid, Machias Regnitz, Yusis Alberea, Elma Milstein, Fai Klausel, and Gaius Warsel. 
among an entirely separate, new, yet smaller Class 7 come Cold Steel 3. Now, before we move into the fourth and currently ongoing arc, the Caliber Dart, we have to talk about Trails into Reverie, and a little bit of Cold Steel 4 and the series as a whole. So, since these games take place in such close proximity to one another, you'll often see characters from other games show up in games after they were introduced. Trails of Cold Steel 4 is collectively known as the Avengers Endgame of the Trail series, where a lot of past main characters return. Trails into Reverie continues this trend, and is collectively a crossover title. Trails into Reverie doesn't fit into any one arc, and instead acts as a transition point from the first half of the series, the Libero, Crossbow, and Erebonian arcs, into what comes next. As such, it takes place in 1207 and features three point-of-view stories. One, Lloyd Bannings and his crew in Crossbell, one of Reen Schwarzer in Erebonia, and one of a mysterious masked individual named only by the letter C. Trails into Reverie is currently only available on PC and PlayStation in Japanese, but like Trails to Azure and Trails from Zero before it, there is a translation for this done by the Zero Field team. And you can play this in English today if you so choose, but also like Trails to Azure, this game is officially being released sometime in 2023, and this includes a version on Switch as well as PC and PlayStation. I'm a little iffy on supporting this official release for reasons we'll talk about next, with the currently ongoing arc, the Calibert arc. So we have two titles thus far and word from on high that Calibert will end in a trilogy. So first we have Kuro no Kisaki, tentatively translated as Trails in the Dark. This takes place in the year 1208 and focuses on a man named Van Arkride and his story as a Spriggan, which is one half bounty hunter and one half detective. Now, talking about Kuro involves talking about Zero Field again, as the team that was working on an English translation for Kuro as there is no stated release dates for an English version of it and its sequel. Yet, NIS America has taken action to send a cease and desist removal order to this team to completely eradicate their hard work done out of love for the series, and this is shitty. I'm going to link a video by YouTuber and huge trails advocate Enel. You may recognize him as he's a huge Xenoblade speedrunner, but he has a video that dives deep into this topic more and he's been a very large vocal advocate against this stance NIS has to shit on the fans who help advertise and spread the love of their games. The reason this sucks is because it's the love the fans have for the series that gets these games localized. Trails from Zero and To Azure are using fan translations that NIS America purchased. So it seems incredibly hypocritical of them to publicly support the work Geofront's done, but tear down Zero Field. Anyway. Personal tangent over. Kuro is currently out in Japan only for PS4, PS5, and PC, and nothing else. No plans to bring it to the West have been mentioned yet, and while I don't doubt that we'll eventually get them, since NIS America announced their Trails translation project of getting Zero, Azure, Reverie, and a related smaller project called The Legend of Nayuta Boundless Trails over to the West, and I think over the last game, as it's not fully a main Trails RPG, and it's more of an action RPG, but basically, these projects took precedence over translating Kuro and its sequel to the West. Which, don't get me wrong, I support bringing these games over officially, but at the same time, they didn't do the work for half of them. And waiting long wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if we could play a fan translation, like many people did for Reverie. Anyway, the most recent game to release in the series is the sequel to Kuro, being Kuro no Kisaki to Crimson Sin, or tentatively translated as Trails in the Dark 2 Crimson Sin. This game came out just three days after the new Zero port did over here in the West on September 29th, 2022, and it takes place in 1209 and continues Ban Arkride's story. And at the moment, that is currently all of the released Trails games and their availability. Now, usually with a game series this large, the question of play order comes into question. 12 is a hefty number after all, and here's my take on it. If you are able to, 
I recommend you begin with Trails in the Sky. It is the first game in the series, and the first game in the libero arc. Playing through in a linear fashion is the best way to experience the story, understand the callbacks and references, and so on. These three are available on PC currently, though talks of a remake of FC are floating around the rumor mill. I will say though, these games can be played on a potato. I would say every game up to the Cold Steel games can be played on a potato. I would say every game from Cold Steel Beyond can be played on a slightly better potato. It's not super intensive, but it does require a little bit more power if you're going to play it on PC. But then again, there's the PlayStation and the Switch alternatives. With that said, if PC gaming is not an option for you, then I would suggest you start with either Trails of Cold Steel 1 or Trails from Zero. Basically, any first game at an arc is a good place to start if you can't start at Sky. I think this works because Cold Steel and Zero start at the same point in time, so if you play one and then the other, you can experience the story in a neat way. I would just essentially avoid playing any of the later games in an arc as your first game. There are solutions for this, as later games do have recap menus that explain what's happened previously, but I think it's a suboptimal way to experience this older stories, and at that point, you may as well watch a YouTube recap. As frankly, that is a lot of information to absorb by then to only then learn new information then on. Oh, and one last thing. These games are packed full of content, being side quests and additional lore and reading material as you play. So visit bookstores and shops and pick up copies of newspapers or the volumes of books inside. It's crazy how much extra world building and foreshadowing exists in these. Well, with that, I think I'm going to end my talk off here. Maybe someday when I finish my Xeno Explained series, I'll tackle a Trails Explained series. But that's only if, and only if, this happens first, because my brain would explode if I tried tackling both at once. Anyways, check you guys next time.